Hi, I'm Jack from Jack's Films. Recently, I held a 48-hour film festival where participants had to make a parody, music video, or sketch in just 48 hours. Somehow, it became such a hit that Adobe asked me to make a series of videos breaking down some of my essential workflows for my parody projects. So get ready, get excited, because in this video, we're gonna take a look at color correction inside Adobe Premiere. Let's -a go! In Adobe Premiere, make sure you are using the color workspace by coming up to the top of your screen and selecting color. On the right side, you'll see the Lumetri color panel, and we're gonna start grading from the top down using basic correction first. The basic correction tab is where the foundation of your color work will be done. Adjust the white balance by using the white balance selector eyedropper or by adjusting temperature and tint manually. Under tone, use these sliders to adjust exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and saturation values for your footage. Now, I wish I could give you a secret recipe for this stuff, but it's truly dependent on the footage that you shot. When in doubt, you can always click on the Lumetri Scopes tab on the left side of the screen to give you a visual indication of where your colors are sitting. A general rule of thumb, you don't want your highlights above the top line or your shadows below the bottom line. Increasing your contrast will spread the scopes out more Try not to fully rely on scopes over your own eyeballs. Sometimes that can be a trap. After you're done with basic correction, I would recommend moving on to the Curves tab. Single click to add points to your curve, control click to remove a single point, and double click to reset the whole thing. Since I don't know what footage you're coloring, you're gonna have to use your best judgment on what looks good. Be careful not to overdo it. Sometimes less is more. Under RGB curves, you can use the eyedropper tool to adjust hue, saturation, and luminance values. Selecting a color will give you three points to adjust under the given category. You can add more points by single clicking and adjusting accordingly. All the graphs do different things, so just be aware of what you're adjusting. Otherwise, things could get weird. Next, I would recommend moving to Color Wheels and Match, which will give you the opportunity to adjust the colors of your shadows, midtones, and highlights individually. To the left of the wheels is a vertical slider, which you can use to boost or reduce overall shadows, midtones, and highlights as well. HSL Secondary is a tab that can be a lot of fun. Use the eyedropper to select a specific color, then click the little checkbox to isolate the color and use the sliders to dial in the hue, saturation, and luminance values. After that, you can refine your selection in a number of different ways, including changing the individual color. Vignette will, you guessed it, add a vignette to your footage. This is great for pulling in the viewer's eye to the center of the screen. Or you can use the white vignette for a love or dream sequence. Lastly, the creative tab. I like to use this tab last because, to me, it feels like it contains a lot of finishing touches. Most notable, at the top, you have the ability to add a LUT to your footage. LUT stands for Look Up Table, and basically, it means values for color in versus color out. Adobe provides you with a bunch of different LUTs to choose from, and you can also use your own from third-party packs or presets if you so choose. Additionally, there are a few other finishing sliders for you here, like Fade and Sharpen, as well as the ability to tint your shadows and highlights. Now, we did mention LUTs as part of the Creative tab, but if we come back up to the Basic Corrections tab, the very first item you can choose is Input LUT, and this will be a valuable option for you if you shot in a flat color profile for your project. For example, if you shot an S-Log or a profile with a Rec. 709 color space, you can simply choose the default 709 LUT option, and your footage will instantly look better. You usually won't have to do much else to it after that, other than some minor adjustments. But if you didn't shoot in a flat profile, I would recommend skipping this step, otherwise your footage will look way too saturated and contrasty. Once you've dialed in your color, and you're feeling super awesome about it, I would recommend saving it as a preset, or a LUT, or both. First, for preset, navigate up to the top of the Lumetri tab, click on the three lines, and choose Save Preset. Name it, give it a description if you want, then click OK. 
Now if we delete the Lumetri plugin off our layer, then come over to Effects, then Presets, you can drag and drop that preset back onto your footage or any of the other footage in your project. I like this option because it retains all of the tabs in Lumetri color, so if you need to make adjustments, it's fairly easy to follow. The other thing you can do is save this look out as a LUT by coming up to the top, clicking the three lines, and choose export.cube. Name it, and save it somewhere on your computer. Now, under Input LUT, I can browse for a custom LUT and apply it to the footage, but this will not retain the Lumetri color tabs, so just be aware of the differences. The upside of saving a LUT is that it can be easily shared to other programs like After Effects or sent to someone else to use. Boy oh boy, I wish I could see your footage right now. Cause if I could, I would say, Mamma Mia, what beautiful color corrected footage you got there. And while you're here, why don't you watch more of my tutorials right here on Adobe's YouTube channel.